Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our circle. Connecting all parts of the world in one radiant sphere. Encompassing and embracing our beautiful Mother Earth. This is our monthly meeting of the Creative Lab, Awakening the Souls of Our Nations. And I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 initiative and the Hekal group from Jerusalem and Klanschale group from Germany. We continue our work as one global family. Over to you. Thank you, Alexander. And welcome everyone. In our nation's lab, we practice every month becoming stewards for humanity. We learn together all kinds of skills which may be required for those people who will work in a soul-guided United Nations sometime in the future. And we also experiment with applying these skills to some situation on the planetary agenda. We have started this a few months ago. So we have now, lately, we have uh, two parts in, uh, in our meeting. In the first one, we will practice a specific skill. And in the second, we will experiment with applying it on a world situation. So today uh, we continue what we did last time with the exploring the mental aspect of our workspace, of our council chamber of elders in training and uh, going a step deeper with it today. And then we will focus on on this ancient karmic situation in the Middle East that has risen again to very loud prominence. And in this situation, situation of war, mental perception, of course, is quite hard to achieve but we can make a start today with preparing ourselves for it. So let us go into a little bit deeper look at mental work. See on the screen, um, it's it's a com compressed form of the, um, the quote that we had last uh, month. It's from Cosmic Fire, pages 954 and following. Um, so let us for a moment to first of all contemplate on what the Tibetan calls the task of mental workers, these three tasks, and uh, get a sense of what that takes. The imposition of the newer and higher rhythm upon man. The dissipation of the murky clouds of half vitalized indefinite thought forms which surround our planet.
and the awakening within men of the power to think clearly. So it's, it's taking care of the mental matter of our planet, dissipating the murky clouds and imposing a newer rhythm, a higher mental matter and awakening in men, in human beings, the power to think. So the skills to be acquired, a clear comprehension of the power of thought, the manipulation under law and order of mental matter. The direction of thought currents. The process of thought manifestation. And the harnessing and directing the thought power as a group towards a specific objective. Today, in the meditation, we explore a bit, getting a, a felt sense of the power of thought and how we, as a group, manipulate our mental field, our mental matter, in an orderly way. So let us yeah, make an experiment now in our council chamber of elders in training uh, with visualizing something and dissipating it, getting a sense of uh, manipulating mental matter. Okay. So let us enter meditation, withdraw our attention into inner stillness. Taking a deep breath and grounding in our body. and feel our connection to the Earth Mother. Standing in the love and the freedom of our soul, as a soul. Taking a moment now to become aware of our thought life. Perceive the various thought currents happening in our mind at the moment, sense the vibration of that. And allow now our mental field to become clear and focused.
Let us now fine tune a bit further our vibration in preparation for meeting in the council chamber. Expanding now our awareness to a planetary perspective. and calibrating our heart to the all-embracing will to love. We concentrate and consecrate ourselves to serving humanity. And letting ourselves now be drawn to the beautiful building set in nature, which we already know very well by now. Entering the quiet, clear, spacious chamber. Taking our places in geometric order. Sense the atmosphere in the chamber. The, the geometrical harmony. being aware of each other's presence in the circle and of the space that we together hold. In the center of the chamber, let us visualize the flame of our combined, sustained will to love. Let our hearts tune to it. And holding together this space of intent, sustained love. Becoming aware now of the mental aspect, the mental space of the council chamber. Calm, clear, spacious. It vibrates to the rate of the Ajna center of the planet. And through this vibration, we are linked with our fellow workers in all nations.
Let us recognize and sense this clear mental workspace which we hold together, a telepathic field on which the higher forces may play and in which we may discern subtle currents. We notice the presence of high deva beings which hold this space with us. So now that we have it stable, our mental space, let us make an experiment of consciously manipulating this field now, building together in mental matter. Within our mental workspace, let us now visualize the shape of a horizontal five-pointed star. Let us draw it with a golden line. and see it gradually taking shape in our mental field. Holding it with our Ajna centers. Holding it stable. And now gently release it. See it dissipating. And now let us visualize the shape of a horizontal six pointed star and draw it with a cobalt blue line. See it gradually taking shape in our mental field. Get a sense of this specific tension that we hold in our mental field in order to hold this six pointed star in place. and gently releasing it, seeing it dissipating. Holding for a moment our mental matter in a neutral state, clear and stable. And now let us open our mental field to our ashramic co-workers. Those co-workers who stand back of this nation's lab work. And as we do so, observe how the mental matter in our shared field becomes finer. It starts to vibrate to the higher note of the mental field of our ashramic co-workers. Take a moment to 
sense this calibration taking place. The whole mental field becomes fine-tuned and high vibrational. And we hold this high vibration, high receptivity for a moment for this higher communion with our Ashramic co-workers, we take a minute for this. Making our mental field available to the higher communion. And gently releasing now our high pitch, lowering a bit the vibration so that the subtle impressions may condense within the group mental field. And gradually returning to our daily consciousness and taking some time to note down this experience, this experiment. Okay, so 
So this exercise has sensitized us to the power of thought that we may wield as a group through syn synchronizing our thought currents and consciously manipulating our shared mental matter. It gives us a, a, a taste, a sense of what is possible when we with intention employ thought power in group formation. And this is what we we are supposed to learn And before we may dare to use our thought power towards a specific objective on the world arena in the collective field, DK warns us that we must first make sure that we do so as souls with a soul perspective and making sure that our motive is the highest good of all involved and that we have a clear comprehension of the situation, the situation that we want to help. Okay, so our theme, the Middle East, Israel, Palestine, this situation is an especially complex one, so ancient and so loaded. And now, as the war, the war is going on, clear comprehension may not be possible. But we can do some step, can do, we can prepare ourselves, our attitude towards such comprehension and towards such work. Um, I would like now to invite Helen from Jerusalem to share with us some of her, her present impressions and experience. Please, Helen. Hi, Shalom. Uh, yes, it's kind of hard to... Uh, express um, impressions. So in the middle of this uh, very violent conflict that is age old, as uh, Uta said, I will bring a story, the gist of a story, the summary of a story of two brothers. Um, I must say that uh, I have been inspired by the approach and the attitude of an Israeli spiritual teacher who is a source of compassionate heart understanding and a source of healing. So I'm going to tell the story of the two children of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael. Both children were wounded by their father. Isaac was ready to be sacrificed for the idea, the ideal, the idea of God Almighty by his father, and then saved by energies and declared as the favorite son. Ishmael was rejected by his father and his family and expelled and banned, wandering into the desert, into the desert to look for a safe haven and determine his physical territory. Two brothers who never came at the time toward each other 
after the disappearance of the father who has really imposed on them this situation. They never came toward each other to say, we have been wounded and it's not our doing. Let's live like brothers, be friends and live with respect for each other. But love is needed to get to that place of extending a hand to outreach each other. And instead, they embody this decree, this edict. They hurt it. They pass it on to the generations to come and convert it to all that, all that we are witnessing nowadays, a very, very heavy karmic load. Love is needed to release the karma of victim perpetrator. Love is needed to stop perpetuating trauma through generations and creating generations who only know trauma. Wisdom is needed to set healthy borders or healthy, healthy agreements to rebuild the basics of the sanctity of life, to build a human sense of self. Will and intention are needed to begin a healing process. We invoke the aid of the higher guides of humanity and let us open or be opened to the succor that we can receive, to the help, to mobilize courage, responsibility, clarity, to mobilize heart energy to agree to look to face each other in ourselves and collectively and have the strength to break this karmic wheel that we have been carrying since the dawn of humanity. and our prayer and help us to play our part. Yeah, that is the two brothers. Yeah, back to you, Uta, thank you. Thank you, Helen, for this moving account, this moving picture story that you gave us here. And in continuation and in, in um, strengthening what you just brought, we would like to share a passage from the Glamour book, uh, page 147, and the following. Here, the Tibetan has said to his disciples, it was during the height of the, of the Second World War. Um, 
if we exchange in this short passage that I will read the word Germans for the word Palestinians, it may be very fitting for the present situation. So here are the Tibetans' words. In the middle of the war. I am going to ask you to take the Germans and the Jews into your group meditation and pour out your group love upon both these divisions of your brothers in the human family. See to it that before you begin your meditation, you have freed yourselves, emotions and mind, from any latent antagonisms, from any hatreds, from any preconceived ideas of right or wrong but that you simply fall back upon the love of your souls, remembering that both Jews and Germans are souls, as you are, and identical in their origin, their goal, and their life experience with yours. As you pour out the stream of pure white light, see to it, that it pours through you with purity and clarity. The quality of your love will count, and not so much the accuracy of your analysis or the perfection of your technique. So in our meditation now, we will first have a brief look at the situation, like a tiny mini snapshot, just for two minutes, to really um, create um, a connection with the situation, while of course holding our silent watcher position. And then we will use our heart center to pour out our impartial love upon the whole situation as DK proposes. So let us reconvene in our council chamber midway between humanity and hierarchy. Coming together. Holding our common space, the flame of the will to love and the telepathic field. Standing together as silent watchers. And from our high observation point, let us look upon our planet and for a moment holding her in our loving awareness. Planet in transformation, in turmoil, in high tension. Let us become aware of the different continents, Europe, Asia, Oceania, Africa, America, and get a sense of humanity being spread out over these continents ordered into nations. Mm -hmm. 
And now let us focus in on the Middle East, observing from above. Look at Israel. Look at Palestine, the two areas of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And now also the neighboring countries, Egypt to the south, Jordan and Syria to the east, and Lebanon to the north. being aware that this area is embedded in the wider region of the Middle East. And now, from our observation point in the council chamber as silent watchers, let us take a look now, open ourselves just for a moment to the emotional and mental situation that underlies the outer happenings. Taking just a minute. Okay, releasing now, refocusing within the council chamber, breathing, and making sure that we have released all judgment. Let the quality of our love count now. So let us stabilize ourselves for the work by consciously focusing within the heart center. Let us imagine it between the shoulder blades in this point where will and love unite. And imagine this heart center as a radiant sun. And now see and sense a shaft of pure golden white light, broad and brilliant, pouring out of this place between the shoulder blades onto the area of the Middle East. Let this light pour through. And 
And see now our individual shafts of light blend together. We see a great flood of our combined directed light pour onto the Middle East area. Letting it pour through and let us hold this stream steady for two or three carefully sustained minutes. Okay, gradually releasing now this outer work, releasing and refocusing for another moment in our council chamber. to rest and breathe in each other's presence. And gently returning to our individual grounding. taking a couple of minutes to note down any impressions we may have.
Yeah, okay. Let us open the floor now for sharing any impressions. Okay, I'm Grete from Denmark and this is Hal. Uh, I want to share. I had the feeling now when we are moving to the mental sphere in our council chamber. I have a feeling that we, a gathering of devas, are coming together now, taking interest in us when we are in this mental, more clear sphere because we're from where they, the great devas, are working. It is from uh, the uh, intelligence sphere, which belongs to this uh, mental sphere. And when we meet them with love, they can work intelligently with us. And uh, especially in this time, they, this cooperation is so much needed. So uh, I felt that you, uh, throughout the, the whole meditation, and thank you for that, Uta. And uh, Helen, thank you for this fantastic story of Ismail and Isaac, uh, and, and what uh, causes the whole thing, uh, uh, karmic uh, turmoil yet now, and the, all the tragedy. But uh, what I think is that we really need to work intelligent with the devas. That that is what can work, that can uh, we with the love, and then we then they with the intelligence, so we can manifest a loving intelligence. So that was my main impression today tonight. Thank you. Powerful statement, Grete. Thank you for this. Hi, <clears throat> this is Efrat from Jerusalem. Thank you, Uta. This meditation and Helen and all of you it is so difficult, sometimes almost impossible to raise up from the happening of time, from the reality that we are experiencing now, and to go up to a higher point of view, to the beautiful chamber, and to open up. That is something that we should we should concentrate our effort towards doing this and doing it in a group. It's very helpful. Uh, on the ground, the, the emotions are so mixed. It's a mixture of huge grief and pain and fear and and calling for revenge and anger so heavy emotion that uh, to find a compassion and love which are so needed it's really uh, something that had to come from the mental it's not come from the mm -hmm. emotion uh, we should go up to the mental fin and, and like like using a muscle, like make an effort or um, to decide to choose to find this gentle and so needed soft emotion and. Um, on the ground on the physical, it's, it's such a mess. And uh, um, all, all sides try to, to heal wounds and uh, to survive in a way. Um, and I don't know how much do you aware of it, but here in Israel, we have in the 
the settler in the West Bank, it's like uh, um, like the immune system attacks herself in a way. Mm. Um, so it's really very complicated, and I really want to bring the beautiful, beautiful solidarity that the civilian in here in the um, just uh, bring because we also have thousands of people out of the house, homeless actually. So um, we really need, really need the help of our co-workers on the ground and from the other side and from the chamber. Um, this is where I'm standing now today and thank you. Thank you, Frat. Hi, this is Helen, and I would like to add to Ifrat and Greta's uh, sharings. Uh, Greta, thank you for bringing this uh, this loving intelligence uh, on the foreground and the cooperation. For me, the f first meditation on, on of the council chamber and the mental sp space was a clear, cool experience. Uh, it's like the mental substance is getting to be kind of tangible and experiential. And um, uh, order is beginning to uh, settle in. Um, when we looked at the Middle East, uh, it was kind of difficult for me to um, even uh, to, to to see the shaft of light coming from the heart, and uh, um, very hard to penetrate uh, this inflamed area right now. So the group. Uh, presence and support and togetherness is uh, of vital importance. Thank you. Yes, so I also want to share with Annette from Germany. So for me, looking at the Middle East was like looking into a into a deep wound, um, which which triggered deep compassion, and um, it was like um, giving this white and golden light together to this area with the heart seemed like pouring out a much needed balm. And, um, and for me, it was like a, a movement in, in both direction. One was giving this, this light into this area and the other was, uh, direction was taking the area into our heart. So thank you very much for this deep and profound meditation.
This is Andrea from the United States. Thank you, Uta, again and again and again for your leadership in bringing us all into this endeavor that is so important right now. When you asked us to see the Middle East, I saw the eyes of the children. And I saw those eyes that are confused and that don't understand separation, that are used to jumping into a playground and playing with whoever is there without seeing a difference. I see the, the innate joy that pours out of them, even in the shadows that they are amidst now. And I saw them looking up into the sky and the sun that they saw was a star and that star was Sirius. And Sirius has been very powerful for me in the last few weeks. Um, it keeps coming into my meditation and I find myself drawn into the outdoors in the early, early mornings of the night and finding Sirius and feeling uh, a sense of something coming from Sirius. And so when we moved through into the second meditation and we were asked to collectively come together um, and, and, and direct our light and our love into the Middle East, again, it was for me directed at the hearts of all of the children. And it was funny because as I found us doing that, I suddenly had this image of us all suddenly aware of a presence and we turned and looked up over our shoulder and we were being flooded by the Syrian light. And it was as if it was lighting us in order that we could light the Middle East and for me, the hearts of the children. And so it is just that recognition that we're not alone in this endeavor and that we are being supported. And I think we're being supported from the hierarchy of the hierarchy, which is extraordinary, but we have been calling to them for years now. And I think they now recognize us as, as a conduit that is important to work to and through. So the Syrian light is what I'm going to hold. Thank you. Uh, yes, Desha here in Canada. When you first asked us to focus on the mental, emotional substance in the area, my impression was just a turmoil, chaos, swirling energy, nothing specific. And after our work together with the light, and our calm, loving presence holding without judgment, some of the static had settled. That was my sense of it, thank you. Maria Cristina here from the Arizona Sonora um, Desert with great gratitude for all who have spoken and are present and to and Helene standing holding within the very bowels i could not delve very deeply into the palestinian israeli geographical area it was a very murky dark 
smoky clouds from the perspective of non judgmental council chamber. Um, young souls and ancient karma coming together. Yes, and ancient karma, self inflicted. But also, oh, on the other hand, I believe many young souls entering into the field of experience may have experienced much pain. In the burning grounds of Scorpio, because these days I am very aware of the infusion of qualities from Scorpio, enabling us to lift the hydra, to lift all of it. But it can't be one head, one opinion, one viewpoint. Because then with that judgment, you cut off one head which proliferates into many. And there is the need to lift the dweller as a whole and together do so. And I do see Hikal as a very uh, anchoring point for that. Thank you. And on the one hand, and on the other hand, holding, holding um, that magnetic presence of the heart, the soul, the love, and evoking the phoenix, evoking the phoenix as it rises from the burning grounds, the essence of solar fire awakened by the magnetic group heart, bringing that um, releasing beauty of this phoenix of the new transformed Thank you. I find it interesting that uh, some of us, some of you have uh, mentioned um, this working together of, uh, like Greta said, intelligence and love. Um, and I think it was Efrat who said, um, uh, in, this, in this dense <clears throat> emotional state, the love cannot come from the emotional plane, must come from the mental plane. Um, I had something that fits to this. Um, while I felt us, um, experienced us projecting this light through the heart, through the heart center, um, I had a distinct sense how this um, exerts a pull, so to speak, from the higher centers, from the center, in, from the center of the head, and also from the uh, from the uh, the top of the head. 
So I was, I was also distinctly aware of, of this sending through the heart is not only the work of the heart. It, it requires the whole, the whole system or all the, all the higher chakras anyway, working together. That was new to me that, um, Mm. And and the other thing was this, I felt a stable field being held by us. And I believe, I think Helen also, you said it, um, starting to work consciously in mental matter together as a group is uh, it's like it's a higher order is available to us. Um, so this field, although we work a lot with the flame of the will to love and and uh, somehow it uh, it resonates um, perhaps more with the heart, here comes in a new um, an, an, a new ingredient or a new aspect of it making this whole process much more, much more whole. And um, yeah, perhaps or probably what you said, Greta, found this very profound, your, your sense of the devas coming in, in response to how we work together. And here, um, Probably most of you are aware that we are now doing um, a weekly vigil for the Middle East. And we had yesterday uh, such a vigil. Uh, every Monday we have it. And I had the distinct sense of this, of this field being held much more solidly with much more, um, don't know how to say it, maybe will, maybe commitment, presence um, by, by the community, by us as a group that is working here on the 2025 initiative platform. But I believe in general, the people who are um, available for this world work, there is a new sense of commitment of, of of presence of yes, doing it now. Yeah. If somebody would like to speak to the to this little exercise. Uh, of imagining together, visualizing together a geometric form. How did that, um, how was this experience? Um, I can see from the sharings that uh, this, this mental work, this mental focus has really added something also to, to this looking out work or to this radiating work. Um, perhaps there are some some specific impressions about this geometric visualizing experiment. I could share some words about that. Um, I was actually wanted to uh, to share about the, our visualization of radiation of uh, love but uh, yeah I'd like to share about this first exercise was um, I also found it very useful and uh, in a way bringing our mind into discipline mm -hmm. the geometric discipline of clarity um, recently, I came across a very interesting um, um, symbol 
of uh, about clarity of the mind, trying to think uh, clearly as if you are a sculptor carving a sculptor a sculptor mm -hmm. uh, like carving a statue from a stone with the power of your thoughts and with the laser of your thoughts with and you require high precision to bring um the form and shape out of the raw material of stone mm -hmm. And for me, it was very um, enlightening and uh, helped me to bring that extra clarity into meditation and especially when sounding uh, different mantras. And now, uh, every time when I sound the great invocation, I think about what is that, what does it mean to be a sculptor with the precision of thought sounding for, for certain phrases and intentions. And so this exercise today was uh, quite along that line. And so, yes, yeah, thank you very much for bringing that. I, I think we all need that and uh, uh, would benefit for that. And so it would be great to continue this mm -hmm. line of work. And as for the second meditation with the radiation of love um as i was holding that visualization holding my heart open radiating that beam of love uh i had a sense that it's just not enough it's not enough capacity of my heart and not enough capacity of uh, our combined hearts and uh, there was almost a physical need at the, by the end of this visualization to uh, to add to that uh, the power of uh, to the heart of in in the head hmm. that brings quality of focused intention and the will to love. And now as I speak, maybe uh, it didn't come at that point, uh, but maybe even the, this groundness that comes with the um, holding the ground uh, uh, with the energy of the base chakra. Mm -hmm. So it's, the, the, it's, we need to, the much more sophisticated tools to deal with mm. this campaign. Uh, the will to love, that's from my sense that's probably the lowest what it could be adequate in the situation like that. Because this, uh, it's my sense that it's not just the karmic situation. It's the situation, uh, exactly as Maria Cristina said, it's the, it's the situation of the, that uh, unpenetratable cloud of murky uh, uh, fog. That's this uh, gray cloud of which decay was talking. And so it's, it's a presence of evil that makes this situation much, much, much more complex. And not only in the Middle East, but in the same in the situation with Russia and Ukraine. And so it's our fixed intention and invocation to the helpers, uh, to the hierarchy to stand with us. And so it's 
we need to raise our capacity to deal with the situations like this. Mm. Mm -hmm. Much more practice, huh? Yes, um, if I may add, Maria Cristina again, thank you, Sasha. I, I had a difficult time with, uh, I had to lift the heart to the heart in the head and to the heart of the system and to the soul. And that was, it's kind of a, again, going back to the Phoenix so that there was this magnetic um, attraction, uh, presence being felt that evokes the soul of those present on the ground. That That's a transformative arena, if you will, is through the heart and the head to the soul. Thank you for adding clarity to that, Sasha. Mm. Edith from Denmark. Uh, I would uh, recommend the book uh, uh, Thought Forms from Annie Besant and Ledbetter. They uh, experimented with uh, telepath uh, telepathy, um, sending thought forms to each other. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, five-pointed and six-pointed stars and so, mm -hmm. in different colors. And okay. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. it's, it's it's very interesting um, to see, and and, and they also um, um, explain why the the thought is going to be very clear to get a um, clear edge of 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 the thought form and so on. Um, if you're just um, thinking. Uh, um, um, uh, not very clear. Then, then it is only a, a fluffy form you get. Mm -hmm. um, you, you need, uh, as Alexander said, uh, all your your will uh, power and your um, laser sharp uh, the thought to to get the 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 uh, the thought form. Uh, um, clear and and also to send it uh, um, to radiate it um, uh, so that those uh, who who receive it uh, can can uh, react on it and mm -hmm. can 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 um, register it yes yes Exactly, and they they have um, let better has uh, also uh, uh, a book called Music Forms. Uh, it is about the same thing, um, and also about uh, the the beautiful books about Thebes, uh, where he he has uh, worked together with a painter who has painted what he can see um, uh, clairvoyance. Um, of, of the uh, beautiful thought forms uh, around uh, churches and temples and so so on uh, after a, a big concert, uh, for instance, uh, the music uh, makes a, 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 a huge uh, thought form around uh, uh, the church, for instance, um, like a, a big painting. Um, I, I think it's it's very interesting books. I can re recommend them. Mm. Um, yeah, thank you, and thank you very much for the, for the meditation and for all the thoughts. Uh, uh, I think it's it's very interesting. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Annette, for this. It's worth looking it up, yeah. Yes, thank you extremely. This is Martha living in Canada. The, the, uh, I would like to speak to the technique of persistence and that it felt like a very strong call in relation to the six pointed star that for me moved uh, into a multi-dimensional uh, object. And I want to um, affirm and strengthen this persistent will in as one soul as we do in developing skill as a new group of world servers. Some of us are seeing that the hierarchy is listening and that we have come some distance in developing our power to project this great light that we receive. Uh, I am not clear at all as to the force of it yet, but there is a combined effort that I believe can be received toward um, uh, creating this field of abiding love, an abiding love that palpitates with active intelligence. So I happen to be Sagittarius, and when we were called to meditate for two or three minutes, it was like a meteor, um, but the meteor uh, of, of golden light in a pointed like a, at one side, pointed like an arrow. And mm -hmm. I realized it was my job to direct it upward mm -hmm. because it was going horizontally. And I had to use uh, a force to project that arrow upward, and then it went into an eye. And for me, that was the Wiesak bullseye. And sometimes we don't always know what our visualizations mean. Uh, I felt insight into the willpower to love as we continue to practice together on behalf of not only our suffering brothers and sisters, um, the pain that we feel ourselves, that we want so much better for others. At the same time, I could see when the arrow went through the eye, I recalled the powerful um, projection, the meditation given in glamour of using the Ajna. And I believe that too may be helpful for us, though all of our insights, I believe, accumulate and that for me, it's letting go of outcome and being very, very much in this present moment of the collective will to spread abiding love wherever there is the collective trauma. And it is throughout the world. It is in Bangladesh and South Sudan and there are so many flashpoints right now, the borders of Pakistan. And yet to be specific, to be focused on one, helps us strengthen our determination because it's the same 
in all of those points of pain, it was so useful to begin with a story as a way of uniting our intentions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, this uh, knowing that it is all the same phenomenon and yet focusing on one, making it specific also through the human experience, um, we also find that this is, uh, this is of the essence to bring it to ground things. Mm. So this birthing, you know, to do this work and then be very attentive to what it is doing in us, specifically those who are present in, in, in any one of these situations. It's, it's like this is the furnace, this is the cauldron in which, in which the transmutation is taking place when we hold this and make ourselves available consciously to this collective, collective process. Yeah, is there anyone else who would like to share before we close? We are quite at the end of the time. Thank you for this very deep, thoughtful, heartful sharing. Okay, it's Kiki speaking. Uh, like Alexander, I've been feeling as these weeks keep going on of, of deep, deep sadness and pain in this situation all around the world as has been mentioned and love just wasn't couldn't get through it it it, it was there and of course essential but it couldn't get through and then i had suddenly what came through was forgiveness and as i thought of forgiveness things started lessening and opening up and I can't say there was joy in the heart, but the heart was opening even more. And Andrea's vision of the children playing and the rainbows of the colors, it, it, I hadn't thought seen that, but that was a feeling that forgiveness was the only thing that would take us through. So thank you. Thank you so much for all this work. Bye now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Our next uh, Nations Lab session will be on the 28th of November. Um, yeah, let us keep up this work with persistence and, as Sasha said, geometrical discipline. I like this term. And uh, of course, our heart, shared heart. So let us close this session with just uh, one more moment, um, holding together our shared flame of the will to love, which is the will to right relations. And let it pour through each of us into our own nation. And onwards, see it flowing into the entire field of the family of nations.
and returning now each one to our personal field, to our personal physical surroundings and letting our light shine where we are and grounding it as a blessing into the earth. Oh. 